Uh, announcements of items uh, and items of interest. There are several documents. You can uh, find them in the ECB under the Open Session tab. They're also linked to the agenda on the Council webpage. There are three reports uh, from our Liaison Societies. These are updates from the American Society of Human Genetics, National Society of Genetic Counselors, and the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. There's also a policy statement from the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics that defines the scope of practice for the specialty of medical genetics. And if that's of interest to you, I would recommend it. Um, it's time for the conflict of interest statement. So this, this uh, statement and description of conflicts applies to the applications that will be reviewed in the closed session. Uh, you must leave the meeting room when applications submitted by your own organization are being individually discussed. In the case of state, higher education, or other systems with multiple campuses geographically separated, uh, own organization of the PI is intended to mean the entire system except where a determination has been made that the components are separate organizations for, for the purpose of conflict of interest. You should avoid situations that could give rise to charges of conflict of interest, whether real or apparent. For example, you should not participate in the deliberations or actions of any application from or involving your spouse, your child, a recent student, a recent teacher, professional collaborator with whom you've worked closely, close personal friend, or a scientist with whom you've had a long-standing scientific or personal difference of opinion. The NHGRI staff will determine the appropriate action based on recency, frequency, and strengths of such associations or interest, either positive or negative, and will instruct you accordingly. In council actions in which, you, in which you vote on a block of applications without discussing any individual one, the on block action, your vote will not apply to any application from any institution fulfilling the criteria and descriptions of conflict of interest noted above. Please sign the conflict of interest uh, form and disposal of confidential material form, which are provided uh, at, your, uh, at your seats. They'll be collected at the end of the meeting. We have one other task to perform before we uh, end the open session. Yes, I will, I will moderate this, but Rudy's going to help. So before we draw the open session of this council meeting to a close, we have uh, one final task. Um, which we delayed uh, until the afternoon. Usually we do this first thing in the morning, but we wanted one other council member to get here to do this. So September, um, people have been around a long time in council, enough years have known that September is parole month in NIH advisory councils, meaning that each council member serves a four-year term that at times might feel like a prison sentence, but um, we've now, uh, but that indeed uh, it's time to get out of jail, so to speak. Um, and so we've now concluded that four members of this council are fully rehabilitated and it's time to return them to society or at least back to the genomics community from whence they came. So with some sadness, uh, but a great deal of gratitude, we are bidding farewell to four members of our council, three of which are here. So I'll do these one at a time and Rudy has departing gifts for each of you. Um, so Amy McGuire. Amy is one of, of two JD legal scholars on the council and as a member of Council's Genomics and uh, Society Working Group. Her longstanding expertise in research ethics and informed consent issues related to genomics research has served us well. But Amy's direct involvement in both the production genome sequencing and clinical genome sequencing activities going on at Baylor give her deep and well-informed and well-respected perspective of the challenges facing large-scale genomics and its path to successful implementation in the clinical setting. This has allowed her to give us valuable input in many different areas during her years on council. So thank you, Amy, for all that you've done and will continue to do for NHGRI. <laughs> Next is Tony Monaco. Tony has a long and distinguished research career in human genetics, but he's also brought the perspective of a university leader, in his case a university presidency, to the council deliberations. His ability to advise NHGRI on contemporary genetics research activities coupled with his knowledge and interest in training and enhancing diversity in universities has made Tony a valued member of the council. I'll also note that Tony holds a perfect attendance record over the past four years, which is truly remarkable when you consider some of the hellish Boston snowstorms that seem to have aligned 
with some of our council meetings over the last two winters. So thank you, Tony. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Carlos Bustamante. We recruited Carlos to the council over four years ago because of a sophisticated understanding of population structures and of genomic variation among and across species. Now, you'd be hard pressed to find any aspect of genomics research, evolution, or computational biology that Carlos is not involved in or keenly interested in. And as an example of that, Carlos is NHGRI's representative on the Council of Council that advises the NIH wide. Division of Program Coordination, Planning, and Strategic Initiatives, otherwise known as the NIH Common Fund. But whatever topic under discussion, you'll always get an enthusiastic, well-informed, and good-humored opinion from Carlos. So thank you, Carlos. You will be missed as well. So, so not with us today, but actually is Jim Evans, who's the fourth party member, and we will hold our applause until February. Because Jim um, is actually going to join us for the February council meeting, a traded not coming this time, it's coming in February. And so we're going to hold, I guess his gifts aren't even here, we're going to hold his gifts and the well crafted paragraph that Rudy prepares for me. Um, we will hold all of that <laughs> until, uh, which I added, but Rudy, I, I want to give due credit for Rudy helping out. Uh, so we'll hold that, uh, we'll uh, give the applause and gifts and paragraph to Jim when he's here in February. So, service on council is intellectually engaging, and it's a certain prestige associated with that role, or so we're told. But it does also carry some, certain, actually quite a bit of responsibility. And in the era, especially that this council and these graduating members have faced of flat funding, which forces agonizing decisions on us that really are not always all that pleasant to contemplate. So I really am grateful to the three of you, as well as Jim, um, for really helping us through these difficult challenges, for contributing thoughtful ideas, um, for contributing to the discussion in productive ways. So again, from all of us at NHR, I thank you very much for your service on our council. So, but, but as Rudy always likes to say, we know your email address, and we know how to reach you, and um, we'll find other ways of continuing to uh, help have you help us. Consider the peer review opportunities oh, yes. that are now open to you. <laughs> And that's that. So, I, and with that, I will uh, call to a close the open session of this advisory council meeting, and uh, we will take a 10-minute break or something. Yeah, 10 minutes. minutes for them to disconnect the cameras, and then we'll reconvene in closed session. Okay. Thank you.